Domingo Herman is somebody who I've talked up a lot on this show, but he's still under 50%. And I get it because the ERA is over four and you just, we're just trained to see that and not trust it. His whip's under one. And mm. there's, a, there's an old kind of school of thought with fantasy. I, and I, I don't know if it's Ron Chandler coined this or Todd Zola or maybe it was you, DJ. Uh, at times I've tr- tried to figure out who figured out, you know, who, who ran that baseball league that we did that sim league. It was you. So maybe I'm, I'm not giving you the credit. It could be Joe Sheehan. I don't know, Bill James. When ERA whip don't tell the same story, I trust mm-hmm. the whip. And Herman's throwing four pitches, three of them grade as plus pitches. He's really spiked the strikeout rate. I think it's 11 strikeouts per nine right now. And some of the ERA estimators actually say his ERA should be a little bit lower, not microscopically low. And I, I get it's hard to reconcile. How can you have an ERA over four and a whip over one? It doesn't make any sense. But right. the walk strikeout rate's really good. And again, he's got a medley of pitches. He's got four pitches. Three of them are grading as plus pitches right now. I still think the Yankees are going to be a competitive team last place in the AL East, but they are over 500. The bullpen support, I think, will get better as they sort things out there. I Domingo Herman, I'm just going to trust the walk strikeout rate. I'm going to trust the pitch mix. I, I think he's capable of being the rest of the season. What are we going to project? I would think like maybe a 3-5 ERA, a one ten whip or something like that. That's playable in most mixed leagues. Yeah, that's pretty wild to see his, his whip be that high. Uh, or the whip is better. Or the ERA is 4.35. The whip is 0.94. That's, that's pretty wacky. Like you don't, you do not see that very mm-hmm. often at all. So yeah, I mean, take advantage of those outliers. Like the closest example I can find otherwise um, that's this wide is Aaron Nola's ERA is 4.44. His whip is 1.13. That's pretty vast as well. But yeah, I mean, take a look at this kind of stuff because every once in a while you can find an outlier uh, who's worth taking a chance on and. You know, Herman's out there in a bunch of leagues. So. so some people might say with the case of Nola, and maybe it applies to Herman too. Sometimes you see stats like this, and the argument is, well, they're around the plate too much. Aaron Nola is mm-hmm. so good with his control that batters are actually using it against him. Maybe he'd be better served to walk a few guys or hit a few guys or something like that. I, I guess there's a school of thought for that. Because right. some guys some guys are always going to be those whip masters because they don't walk anybody. But you know, with Nola, he's allowing too many home runs, and he's been one of the more frustrating aces this year. He's been okay. He got a win this week, which is nice, but he hasn't given you what you your ADP would have expected from him so far. But yeah, may, so I get maybe for all I know, maybe somebody on Fangraphs or somebody somewhere has done a dive into these types of pitchers and what the disconnect is. Right. Some right. some guys never meet their expected stats like their whole careers. So Dave, like Bush Michael Pineda, Michael Pineda was Pineda was like that. that. Dave Bush was a guy who. People would talk about, oh, his expected stats say she should be this much better. And his Evaldi was that way for a while, too. For sure. For sure. You know, and I think we've gotten better at not expecting everybody to have a regular home run rate, that that shouldn't be yeah. maybe normalized. Maybe FIP and XFIP are, are telling us a little bit of a lie sometimes. But that said, yeah. I'm Herman's on a bunch of my rosters. I'm not just telling you to pick him up. I've added him in a bunch of leagues this year. And I, again, I'm going to die on the hill of the walks and strikeouts. They look like a pitcher who's worth rostering. I'm going to roster him. Yeah, and I, I think for a while, and this is kind of pre-StatCast, there was a line of thinking that, like, once a ball is put into play, like, that, you know, it's beyond a pitcher's control. Mm-hmm. Remember that? I think that, you know, there, the shifts are part of it, all that. Like, you know, you you can look at that if you want. But I, I think that school of thought is, is changing now. There are certainly pitchers who uh, – can pitch to softer contact versus those who give up harder contact. And yeah, the, the introduction of Babip and Forrest McCracken and all that was a great first step. And, and yeah. you know, and the fact that he came up with an idea that was so counterintuitive and some of the smartest people in baseball are like, this can't be right. It's like, well, well wait, actually it is kind of right. Well, is it right? It's right to some degree, but yeah. there's, le- there's levels of it. We've gotten a lot more specific with stats, a lot more granular with stats. And this is so many, it, it's a golden age for, stat right. analysis and the revolution stuff, but we have to be smarter with this stuff. Pitchers do have more control over it. At one point, the idea was that they have no control over it. It's just one big lottery. And we know now that that isn't true. Right. And, and you know, when you do look at fielding independent pitching and that sort sort of stuff, yeah, it's great if like a pitcher has a low fit, but if their team's defense is bad, mm-hmm. yeah. then it doesn't matter. And, and that's the way it is with the Phillies, you know, right, like for sure. Zach Wheeler has a, a high ERA, but his fit is low, but, you know, that's kind of what happens when you. It always feels like the Phillies have a team, like a softball team, right? It's like, yeah. oh, whatever. You know, we, 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 we're going to outscore them. Their idea of defense is we'll score nine runs, but um, <laughs> it, it feels like they always oh have two or three DHs in the field. And it hurts now because Harper has to DH. True. That somebody like Kyle Schwarber has to have a glove when maybe he's yeah. the best position is DH, too. 
Yeah, somebody asked me in a in a live chat yesterday, do you think that Schwarber being in the field could be impacting his hitting? And I don't know. I can't get in his head, but it's, you know, it's something to think about, I guess, at least. But um, yeah, I always yeah. think about stuff like, can we talk about what does defense matter? What does positioning matter? You know, does a player relax more? if they're at a position they can handle or they know they're playing one place every day, is, is it taxing on a player if he's bouncing around the field? Some guys, it may not be some guys. It may be. I, one of my cases for Nick Senzel, who I've talked about on the show before and in the spot before was that I thought maybe if the Reds just said, okay, you belong in this one spot, we're going to leave you alone. We're not going to jerk all around the field. Maybe he could just focus on his hitting a little bit more. Or I, you know, I talked about, you know, one year that um, Suarez was asked to be the shortstop for the Reds. It was a horrible position for him. He made like seven errors in the first week. It felt like mm -hmm. did that affect this offense? There's never going to be, this is stuff you can't quantify. And, and I get it. It's, it's a soft factor. Joe Sheen would call it. And sometimes if you look at the clouds long enough, you'll see a pattern, right? I mean, some of this stuff is maybe you're, you know, some, some guys, does a big contract put stress on a player? Does changing teams put stress on a player? Does defense put stress on a player? There's no one universal answer to this. Yeah. Maybe it's unknowable, and maybe I'm kidding myself to even look at this stuff, but I do look at this stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's all part of the puzzle here.